The movie begins once the ghost month commences and the portal to the spirit realm opens. An elderly female shaman is observed conducting a ceremonial rite, calling upon the deity Cumin Thong for assistance. She is asking him to help those who need help and fulfill their wishes. She also begs him to remain less aggressive during this month of spirits and refrain from causing disturbance. All of a sudden, the lights start to flicker and the sound of children's cries permeates the surroundings, signaling the spirit's presence. The scene then changes to a father consoling his weeping child, revealing that a malevolent entity has claimed her mother's life. The man is gripped by fear due to the supernatural occurrences unfolding in his home. Upon checking on his child, he discovers her decaying body. Petrified as he attempts to flee, he is assaulted by an invisible force. Later, his spirit manifests in front of a camera. Subsequently, we then see Quan Yu who is performing in a theater. He is endowed with divine authority, rendering him the ideal candidate to portray Zhang Kui, the hero who battles ghosts and malevolent spirits. Master Z informs Quan Yu's father, named Captain, of his search for a successor in ritualistic performances and identifies Quan Yu as the perfect fit for the role. However, Captain objects vehemently, refusing to permit Quan Yu to pursue the path of a Taoist master. He remembers his own personal tragedy, saying that his daughter's demise was due to his own role as a Taoist master. Thus, he has no desire for Quan Yu to become his successor. He wants his son to lead a safe and wholesome life instead. Meanwhile, Quan Yu, who aspires to become a Parker influencer, diverges from traditional performances, incorporating his own movements to showcase his skills. Following the performance, Captain cautions Quan Yu regarding his performance. He says that straying from the traditional steps could result in utter chaos, as these steps are intended to subdue malevolent spirits. Any deviation may lead the spirits to possess the actor's body. He reprimands his son and tells him that once an actor did such stunts. When the evil spirits got to know that he wasn't the real one, they attacked the performer. The man bled all over and perished on the stage. Master Z attempts to pacify Captain. Just then, the lights begin to flicker ominously. They notice Ching Ching's deteriorating health and decide to take her to a temple for help. All the way, the woman keeps groaning in pain. As soon as they arrive at the holy place, Ching Ching adamantly refuses to enter the temple. However, despite Ching Ching's resistance, they drag her inside the temple. There, a woman named Jiamen sits. She discovers that Ching Ching is possessed by a spirit. Jiamen performs a ritual to break the curse, successfully expelling the spirit from Ching Ching's body. However, when Ching Ching gazes at Quan Yu, he notices she is still under possession. Her eyes have turned menacingly red. After gazing menacingly at the poor boy, she suddenly attacks him, questioning why he didn't save her. Thankfully, Jiamen intervenes, using a whip to subdue the spirit. This causes Ching Ching to collapse, and they quickly take her away. Quan Yu's father comes over and tells his son that now he has seen firsthand what happens when they deviate from the steps while performing. Later, on their way back home, it is revealed that Quan Yu has long regretted not saving his sister when she drowned. He remembers in a flashback how his sister had called on to him, asking him to save her. The sentence that the possessed girl uttered today keeps swimming in his mind as he remembers his poor drowning sister. Upon returning home, Captain gives him a protective charm for his safety and instructs Quan Yu to kneel before the deity and apologize to Zhang Kiwi. He tells him that all the group members that he performs with are like his family. He has a duty to protect them, not to put them in danger. What he did today was extremely unacceptable. However, Quan Yu remains skeptical. He shamelessly asks his father to give him proof that once he kneels before this statue, he will get rich and his family will be protected. His father gasps in shock. To further that shock, he also declares to his father that he will relocate once he amasses enough money so that he may not curse his father too. After that, refusing the charm, he departs, closing the door behind himself. Scared for his son's safety, the man makes sure to apologize to Zhang Kui after he leaves. Meanwhile, at Mei Wang Hotel, the proprietor Wan Hua hears her child Jui Jui playing in the dim hallway. There is a blackout, so she uses a torch and searches for her child. Seeing a ball rolling down the hallway, she follows it, calling out to Jui Jui and asking him to stop disturbing other guests. Suddenly, a door bursts open, prompting Wan Hua to investigate. It turns out to be the room where a man named Mr. Wu stays. She goes there, asking if the man requires assistance. To her horror, she discovers his lifeless body with a spirit-like entity resembling smoke emerging from it and fleeing the hotel. This incident leaves the poor woman shaken to the core. Soon the authorities arrive and take out the lifeless body. Some time later, we see a woman escort, taking a man to the same hotel. As they reach the room where the woman stays, 
They happened across the one where the man just ended his own. Terrified after seeing the hanging rope, the man flees. The woman calls out after him, saying that the money he paid would not be refunded. The woman turns out to be Wan Hua's good friend. She asks about the incident, and the woman tells her how the man had just recently lost his family members. Perhaps the grief was too much to bear, thus he ended his misery. Wan Hua notices how scared the woman is and asks, if it is too much for her, she can just move out for a few days. Later that night, the woman approaches the cursed room. She is about to open the door when she hears a strange ball bouncing in the corridor. Startled, she quickly runs away to the main desk. There she sees Wan Hua and asks if the door has been fixed. The woman replies affirmatively, and finally the woman breathes in relief. She says how they have been searching for Taoist priests, but nobody seems to take on the job. She then suggests hiring the Thai Master, the grandma with one eye, the one we saw in the beginning. As she is pestering Wan Hua about performing a ritual to purify the room, the latter strangely smiles at something. Wan Hua then tells her that she is thinking about going to the shaman and goes away. The woman stays on the counter. She then receives a phone call. As she is attending and taking note of the message, we see Wan Hua in the CCTV footage, taking the ball away. The next day, we see Kuei informing Quan Yu that their video has gone viral. However, Quan Yu notices that the comments primarily focus on a ghost captured in the footage. Although Kuei identifies a shadow in the video, Quan Yu dismisses it as a trick of the camera angle. While Quan Yu practices Parker, Kuei receives a call from his Aunt Lotus, urging him to come early. Aunt Lotus turns out to be the same woman who we saw earlier in the hotel. She offers him a hefty sum as compensation for coming early to work. Sad about leaving his friend alone, Kuei invites Quan Yu to join, suggesting it as a chance for him to earn money and move out as he wishes. Meanwhile, Wan Yu pays a visit to the elderly shaman, who inquires about the well-being of her godson. Wan Yu expresses concern that he hasn't been feeling well lately. The shaman attributes it to the typical instability of children assuring Wan Hua that he will recover. However, she warns that the child's primordial spirit is fragile and advises against allowing him to consume meat. Later, Quan Yu and Kue visit the hotel, where Lotus provides them with items to cleanse room number 621. It is the same room where the incident happened. Wan Yu arrives and discloses that someone had hanged themselves. Upon learning this, Kue refuses to perform the cleansing ritual. His aunt grills him to do the task, but he adamantly refuses. On the other hand, Quan Yu, who is skeptical of such beliefs, volunteers to undertake the task. Just then, he hears Wan Hua's son calling for her. The little kid says that he is hungry, thus she must come and feed him. When Quan Yu tells the woman that her son is calling, Wan Hua is strangely taken aback. Meanwhile, Jiamen departs for Taipei for her exam, and shortly after her departure, an employee notices a table moving seemingly on its own. Later that evening, Wan Hua is hanging bed sheets in the terrace, when she notices someone removing the cloth. She turns around only to be startled to find someone concealed beneath it. Terrified, she uncovers the sheet to reveal Jui Jui. The woman finally takes a deep breath of relief. Jui Jui asks if she can play ball with him, but the woman refuses and says that they can play together once she completes her tasks. Back downstairs, Quan Yu and Kuei are cleaning the room when Quan Yu mentions that he will deliver the bed sheets to Wan Hua and be right back. After he departs, Kuei begins making the bed but senses something amiss. All of a sudden, he observes the hanging rope moving on its own. Terrified, he quickly makes a swift exit from the room. Meanwhile, Quan Yu arrives with the bedsheets at Wan Hua's room, but finds it locked. On his way back, he hears her voice from the terrace. Upon ascending, he finds her engaged in conversation with someone. When he puts the bedsheets down, a ball hits the sheets. The woman reprimands her son not to play around. When Quan Yu looks up, the boy hides behind one of the hanged bedsheets. Meanwhile, Kuei initiates a live stream, telling the viewers that he is at the hotel where recently a man took his own. He is just standing outside the deceased man's room, but is scared to go inside. Encouraged by viewers' suggestions, Kuei resolves to enter the room. As he gets in, some viewers claim to witness movement, causing him to retreat. Outside, he discovers mysterious writings on the floor. When he shows a mirror with inscriptions to his viewers, a viewer warns against gazing into mirrors during the seventh lunar month. It is said that the one who does that would be haunted by the ghosts. Terrified, Kuei quickly covers the mirror with a sheet. Suddenly, the TV switches on, displaying footage of Mr. Wu's son and his wife. As Mr. Wu approaches his wife's lifeless body, the video freezes. Kuei, petrified, attempts to flee, but halts upon seeing someone outside the door. 
Startled, he turns around but collides with Wu's hanging corpse. In a panic, Qa feels a grip around his neck, prompting him to leap onto the bed. However, it turns out to be Quan Yu playing a prank on him. Crying out, Qa begs Quan Yu to not play such pranks on him. Just then, Quan Yu's attention shifts to the mirror, which is mysteriously covered. As he stretches a hand to remove the cover, Qa prevents him saying that it is a bad omen, and he would begin seeing ghosts if he does that. Dismissing the beliefs, Quan Yu says that if that is the case, then among the ghosts, he would want to see his deceased sister first. He removes the sheet from the mirror, causing Qa to shut his eyes tightly. Seeing this, Quan Yu decides to play another prank, tossing Qa onto the bed. During the commotion, he discovers a bedsheet in his hand, questioning whether he had given it to Wan Hua. He smells it, and finds that it lacks any foul odor. Thus it must be a new clean one with the same prints. Then, Quan Yu instructs Qa to make the bed before heading to the bathroom. Qa goes out for a moment, but when he comes back, he is startled to find an individual seated on the bed. The person is covered in the same clean bed sheet from before. As he tries to escape, he encounters the same spectral figure in the hallway, which proceeds to attack him. Meanwhile, Captain attempts to reach Quan Yu via phone, but his son declines his call. Upon entering the house, he is surprised to find the sensor aflame. Back at the hotel, Quan Yu realizes that he's locked in. After peering through the door and finding no one, he suspects Qa of playing a prank. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to him, his sister's apparition appears in the mirror. Determined to sever the rope, he comes back in and retrieves a knife from his bag. Brushing off any supernatural significance, he swiftly cuts the hanging rope. However, the mirror suddenly shatters, eliciting fear in him. Urgently, he calls Wan Hua, explaining that he is locked inside and imploring her to unlock the door. She cuts the call after saying that she will be there in a minute. After putting down the receiver, Wan Hua looks back to notice his son consuming meat. Concerned about his condition, she quickly intervenes and attempts to soothe him. Observing his reddened eyes, she quickly tells him that she is here, and he must not get angry. Her son does not look human at all. After that, she rushes to her office to retrieve the keys. There, she sees her husband Chen, arriving at the hotel with his mistress. Wan Hua confronts him, as he claims to have come for the hotel's title deed and seal. Refusing to hand them over, Wan Hua faces Chen's anger, resulting in him slapping her. He then says that she better keep quiet after what happened with their son's demise. Jui Jui isn't entirely human after all. Subsequently, they depart from the scene. Meanwhile, Chen's mistress waits for him outside, where a ball suddenly bounces towards her. Startled, she hears Jui Jui's voice asking if she can retrieve the ball for him. At the same time, Captain watches QA's previously streamed live on his phone, growing increasingly concerned for Quan Yu's safety. Quan Yu, on the other hand, is still waiting for Wan Hua to open the door. Meanwhile, Chen's mistress searches for the child to return the ball. She is bewildered as she finds herself back in the same location. Scared, she calls Chen to inquire if he's finished and asks him to come and find her. However, the call abruptly ends, leaving her terrified. Just then, she hears Jui Jui's voice on the line and discovers another ball in the hallway. Her phone then displays search results for toy balls, prompting her to throw both her phone and the ball. Attempting to flee, she finds herself back in the same place, trapped in a perplexing loop. Suddenly, she trips over a ball and falls down. Much to her terror, dozens of balls start bouncing toward her. Just then, a terrifying unseen force grabs her neck. The repulsive hands the mercilessly snap it and end her life for good. Meanwhile, Captain contacts Master Z, informing him of his plan to dispel a curse and requesting assistance in summoning magical soldiers and generals to a specific location. Master Z seeks clarification on the situation, prompting Captain to explain that Quan Yu ventured into a cursed area. Despite Master Z's warning that it's the ghost day when evil is at its peak, Captain insists on his support. As Master Z begins the ritual, an unseen force pushes him, revealing a symbol forming with rice grains. He urgently contacts Qi, instructing him to locate the captain with Jaiman immediately. Master Z warns of the ghost gate opening, unleashing demons and malevolent spirits in full force. He believes that a certain malevolent evil called the Tai Demon must be hiding, and warns that if it claims seven more lives, they are doomed. Meanwhile, Quan Yu's room door opens, and as he steps out, he notices a shadow swiftly moving about, pursuing it. He reaches the reception area where he encounters Qa passing by. Quan Yu follows him, urging him to stop playing around, only to horrifically find Qa's lifeless body. Stairs. On the flip side, 
Chen is busy trashing poor Wan Hu's apartment. He discovers an old family photograph and tears it apart in front of Wan Hu, declaring she's unworthy of being Jui Jui's mother. Despite Wan Hu's pleas for him to return the photo, Chen throws her onto a chair and attempts to strangle her. However, just then, the room's lights start flickering, prompting Chen to release his grasp on Wan Hua. He then notices Jui Jui standing behind a curtain. As he approaches it, he strangely collapses and a demonic presence overtakes him. Meanwhile, Quan Yu and Lotus hear Wan Hua's cries. The latter rushes to the scene and finds Wan Hua collapsed near the lifeless body of Chen. In a bid to protect Jui Jui from harm, Wan Hua had inadvertently taken out Chen in a fit of rage. Lotus sees the scene and is shocked by the sight. Wan Hua rises and locks the door, leaving Lotus bewildered. Instead of explaining herself, Wan Hua retrieves a photo from Chen's pocket, cryptically mentioning that her son is desiring meat. Suddenly, Lotus also becomes possessed, and as Jui Jui emerges, the scene fades to black. On the other side, Quan Yu rushes back to find Qa's body missing. Just then, he hears his desperate cries for help emanating from room number 625. However, he soon finds that the screams are echoing from various rooms. The flickering lights prompt Quan Yu to forcefully open a door, only to find the room empty. As he approaches the exit, Qa suddenly attacks, trying to take him out for good. Quan Yu struggles to defend himself, but Qa overpowers him, knocking him down and strangling him. In a moment of terror, Quan Yu recalls his sister's drowning, and Qa morphs into her form questioning why he didn't save her. Just then, Captain arrives dressed as Jean Kiwi. He uses demon suppressing mudras and steps to subdue Kiwi. He moves to break the curse on the rope, but Kiwi rises once more, launching an attack. Quan Yu intervenes, addressing him as Dad, and inadvertently revealing Captain's identity. Despite the chaos, Captain manages to repel the evil spirits possessing Kiwi, but he collapses shortly afterward. Quan Yu guides his father to a room, where the older man expresses remorse for the situation. He accepts responsibility for the unfolding events and his sister's demise. A flashback reveals Captain instructing Quan Yu to take his sister aside to play during the ritual, emphasizing that he won't be able to talk to him once it starts. As the ritual unfolds, tragedy strikes. Quan Ling's bottle drifts away in the river, leading to her tragic drowning as she tries to retrieve it. Despite Quan Yu's desperate attempts to save her, both he and Captain, involved in the ritual, are unable to rescue her, resulting in a heartbreaking outcome. Meanwhile, the shaman observes the statue of Cuman Thong bleeding. Concurrently, back in his home, Jui Jui is depicted consuming lotus, while Wanhua becomes visibly possessed. Kiwai and Jaiman also arrive at the hotel. There, Jaiman senses an ominous presence. She tells Kiwai about the potent curse, and says that she would need to set up protective enchantments around the premises. Back inside the room, Captain ensures Quan Yu wears a protective charm, and instructs him never to remove it. He then proceeds to teach him the Taoist mudras. In the meantime, the shaman carries out a ritual, causing blood to flow from the eyes of all present statues. This leads to Jui Jui screaming in agony and collapsing in the hallway of the hotel. On the other hand, Captain requests Quan Yu's assistance in fetching a towel to cleanse his face. But as he enters the bathroom, Quan Yu is unexpectedly locked inside by him. Outside, Wan Hua finds his collapsed son and rushes Jui Jui to the shaman. The elderly woman looks at the child and is terrified upon realizing that Jui Jui is not her godson. In a startling turn of events, Jui Jui attacks the shaman. In the meantime, Captain confronts the apparition of the demonic child, adamantly declaring his resolve to shield his son from harm. However, he falls victim to the Tai Demon, who hangs and takes him out. Later, when Quan Yu finally emerges from the locked bathroom, he sees his father's lifeless body hanging through the peephole. Terrified, he quickly pulls the door open. However, he is astonished to find the body mysteriously vanished. Amidst the unsettling occurrences, Quan Yu encounters a chilling statue. He is then strangely dragged underwater by a demonic force. There, he finds himself submerged in the same river, where his sister tragically passed away. Witnessing her drowning once more, he manages to rescue her and bring her ashore. Overwhelmed with relief, Quan Yu rejoices, believing he has finally saved her. However, she urgently advises him to flee disclosing that she had been caught by the Tai Demon. Abruptly, she launches an attack and Quan Yu gasps awake, finding himself back in the bathroom. Soon realization dawns on him that his protective charm shielded him from the supernatural assault. Upon exiting the room, Quan Yu discovers his father's sword lying on the floor. Meanwhile, Wan Hua has gathered the six deceased bodies claimed by the Tai Demon. At the same time, Jaiman, sensing the severity of the situation, 
expresses uncertainty about her ability to aid them. As she turns around to ask QI to go back, she finds that QI has fallen under possession. The possessed man then unleashes a brutal attack on her, as he is choking the living daylight out of her. Thankfully, Quan Yu intervenes. He pushes her out of the way and faces the possessed QI. Employing the mudra techniques imparted by his father, he manages to successfully incapacitate him. They relocate to the reception area, where Jaiman discloses her previous encounter with this curse, noting its targeting of individuals with the heavenly mandate. Quan Yu questions the meaning of the heavenly mandate since everyone keeps talking about it around him. Angry, he asks if it entails a mandate to cause harm to those around him. Jaiman shares her own experiences of loss and her acceptance of her mandate, despite uncertainties. It turns out that she is known as Zhang Kui's sister. She says that after she accepted her mandate, her outlook on everything has undergone a significant transformation. Quan Yu confides in Jaiman about his encounters with his sister, who repeatedly mentioned the Tai Demon. In response, Jaiman says that the Tai Demon is a malevolent entity from Thailand, which was previously vanquished by Zhang Kui. Thus, it seeks resurrection to obliterate Zhang Kui's spirit. Since Zhang Kui resides in Quan Yu, that's why he is targeting Quan Yu's life. Suddenly, Quan Yu experiences a sharp pain in his ear. Jaiman focuses and senses the presence of the Tai Demon. Hastening to the rooftop of the hotel, they discover the six lifeless bodies. Among them are Kuei and Captain's bodies. This sight overwhelms Quan Yu, and he breaks down crying. Meanwhile, Jaiman ventures into another room and encounters a statue concealed beneath a cloth. Upon unveiling it, she is horrified to realize it is a statue of the Tai Demon. Suddenly, Wan Hu arrives launching an attack with the intent to harm Quan Yu. However, Jaiman intervenes, utilizing her abilities to subdue Wan Hu. She directs Quan Yu to destroy the Cuman Thong within the statue. Quan Yu rushes to attack the statue, but Wan Hu quickly overpowers Jaiman and rushes after. She expresses distress about his actions toward her son. Both are taken aback by Wan Hu's behavior. Jaiman even tries to tell her that the statue is not her son. She presents Wan Hua with a newspaper clipping recounting her son's demise in a tragic accident. In a flashback, it is revealed that Wan Hua tragically caused her son's demise in a drunken driving accident. After the accident, Chen got consumed by grief and demanded the return of his son. Driven by her profound sorrow, Wan Hua sought the assistance of a shaman to resurrect her son. Despite her warnings that the ritual would disrupt her son's reincarnation, Wan Hua persisted. Overwhelmed by her longing to be reunited with her child, she proceeded with the ritual. Her son's spirit became trapped within a cumin thong idol, which she began to treat as her son. As she offered sac, her visions became more vivid, offering a semblance of normalcy to Wan Hua. However, this changed with the demise of Mr. Wu. The night she discovered a stranger's body hanging from the ceiling, an evil spirit attacked her son's spirit, Jui Jui. Since then, her son ceased accepting milk offerings and instead demanded blood and meat. To appease his demands, Wan Hua complied. And thus, it all came to this. Back to the present, the Tai Demon then coerces Wan Hua into taking her. Witnessing this, Jaiman is alarmed and remarks that it has finally claimed seven lives. Suddenly, both are gripped by intense ear pain, causing them to collapse. In an instant, Quan Yu finds himself thrust into an alternate reality, where he relies on his glowing protection charm to assess his surroundings. Abruptly, the demon materializes, causing him to stagger backward and lose his grip on the charm. The demon launches an attack on him. On the other side, Master Z performs a ritual to summon magical soldiers and generals, albeit unsuccessfully. Desperate, he beseeches Zhang Kui for aid against the malevolent spirits. Meanwhile, Quan Yu's father's spirit appears and bestows his blessings upon him. He tells him to remember all the steps that he taught him and use them well. Zhang Kui Opera serves as the conduit for Zhang Kui's power. Even if portrayed by an actor, the performance possesses the capability to quell all evil. Empowered by this knowledge, Quan Yu rises, assuming the guise of Zhang Kui, and employs the seven star steps taught by his father to compel the demon to reveal itself. Despite his valiant efforts, the formidable demon proves to be overwhelming. As he subdues Quan Yu, Jaiman intervenes, pushing the demon backward. However, the demon forcefully throws her aside and rises, attempting to strangle her. In a last-ditch effort, Quan Yu takes the seventh step, calling out to Zhang Kui to merge with him and expel all evil. With unwavering resolve, he plunges his sword into the demon, ultimately vanquishing it and saving all beings. As the film concludes, Quan Yu embraces his destiny and proudly assumes the heavenly mandate of Zhang Kui. He introduces a modern twist to the opera performance, symbolizing how the new generation will uphold tradition.
During his performance, he sees the spirits of his father and sister bidding him farewell. Master Z asks Jiamen if Quan Yu reminds him of Yen Huo, suggesting that although the living and spirits follow divergent paths, they intersect. He explains that when the Gate of Ghosts opens, suffering and hungry beings emerge to receive offering. According to Yen Huo, he fulfilled his heavenly mandate and must have ascended directly to heaven to enjoy blessings. In the post credit scene, a worker at the restaurant where Jiamen was employed discovers the lifeless body of Jiamen's uncle hanging. Suddenly, her terror escalates as she witnesses a demon devouring the corpse of Jiamen's aunt. The demon rises and advances towards her, concluding the film on a chilling note.